What's going on guys, it's Hi with the Upper Left USA and in this video we are taking a look at a film stock that I used a lot in the past but haven't actually shown on this channel and that is Camp Mir 400. And because it's raining pretty consistently outside today, we are starting this video off at the Needle Lounge in Lakewood, Washington, a tattoo shop. So we're going to start off with some environmental portraitures. So let's get started. So as you can see, it is a new day, and that's because I didn't get to finish the roll of Camera 400 in one go. But today I am shooting a gender reveal, so hopefully we can get some variations in the sample images. So it's taking me a lot longer than expected to finish off this roll of film. I of course started this video off at the Needle Lounge where I was shooting environmental portraitures. Then I shot a gender reveal, but to that day I was actually working so I couldn't just focus on shooting film. I only got like two or three shots off. And today I've come to the WWC Moore Botanical Conservatory, which is just a giant greenhouse for the most part. And today I am hoping to just finish off this roll of film once and for all.
Okay, now that I've finally finished shooting this Royal Camera 400, let's spend some time to actually talk about this film stock. But before we get started, I just want to give a little disclaimer. The results that you saw in this video are particular to the gear that I use, whether it's the lens, the chemicals, the scanner, or anything in between. All of these things will directly affect the final look of the film. Just know that your results will not be the exact same, but you can get a good general idea of the characteristics of this film stock from what I was able to get. Also, if you're wondering why I use any of these particular equipments, well, they were just what was available to me. I didn't go out of my way to find the best materials for this film stock or anything like that. I used my Nikon N2020 with the Nikon 50mm f1.8D to shoot this roll of film because this is just about my favorite film camera setup. The same goes for the chemicals and the scanner that I use. This is what I had around and what I enjoy to use. All of these things give my film a certain look, but there is a consistency between the films because I use the same materials for everything. This means that you can look at my Camera 400 results and compare it to my Ilford HP5 or my Kodak Tri-X results, and even though they aren't side to side one to one comparisons, you can get a good general idea of the differences. And with that out of the way, let's finally talk about Camera 400. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this was a film stock that I used a lot in the past. This was practically my go-to everyday film for a long time, and that largely has to do with how relatively cheap this film stock is. For me, Camera 400 used to cost $2.95 per 36 exposure roll, but unfortunately that price has gone up to $3.95. I used to also buy 100 foot rolls of Camera 400 for about $40 a roll and bulk roll it myself and when you do this you get about 20 rolls of 36 exposures which when you do the math it equates to about $2 per roll of 36 exposures making it just about the cheapest film that you can buy. Even with the recent price increase it looks like this 36 exposure roll of Camera 400 is still the cheapest black and white 400 speed film that is readily available to me and I think that's where the value of this film comes in. Camera 400 provides a cheap option for those who want to experiment with film or a cheap film to mess around with when you don't want to take on the cost of a more well-known branded film stock. Something to note about Camera films in general is that they are manufactured by Harman, which also manufactures Ilford films. I've seen people say that Camera 400 is simply rebranded Ilford HP5, but from personal experience, I really don't think that this is the case. The two film stocks really provide different looks and different results, so I really find it hard to believe that Camera 400 is rebranded or renamed Ilford HP5. Okay, now let's talk about the results that I got with this roll of Camera 400. And when I examine a film stock, I like to consider three things, grain, contrast, and sharpness. When it comes to grain, I think the Camera 400 is a typical 400 speed cubic grain film. The grain is definitely noticeable and among the realm of 400 speed films, it is definitely not the finest, but I really didn't expect it to be. This is a cubic grain film, so it's not going to be as smooth or fine as your T-grain films like Kodak T-Max or Ilford Delta, but among other 400 speed cubic grain films, I would say that this is very typical and give about the same amount of perceptual grain as something like Ilford HP5. In terms of contrast, this is actually a more contrasty film. If we were to take Ilford HP5 as our baseline for flatness, and on the other hand, Kodak Tri-X as a more contrasty film, I would say the Camera 400 falls somewhere in between. The shadows and blacks that I got from Camera 400 is definitely darker, and darker than what I would expect Ilford HP5 to give me, but not as extreme as Kodak Tri-X. If you don't have a frame of reference for this comparison, I suggest you watch my Ilford HP5 vs Kodak Tri-X video, where I did a side to side comparison of the two film stocks, so you can really get a better idea of where Camera 400 stands. Finally, let's talk about sharpness, and I think without doing a side to side comparison, it's really hard to categorize sharpness, so what I'm about to say is really opinionated. For me, the sharpness of Camera 400 is very acceptable. It's sharp enough for me to just look at an image, be able to make out the major lines and know exactly what I'm looking at, but it's not sharp enough to me to really like start zooming in and make out all the fine details. This is not a film that gives you crazy resolution, and you really shouldn't be expecting that. If you want really high resolution, high sharpness, really fine details, you should really be looking at T-grain films, something like the Ilford Delta line or the Kodak T-Max line of films. So earlier I said when I examined a film stock, I considered three things, grain, contrast, and sharpness, but there is a fourth category, and that is price. When talking about Camera 400, I gave some other alternatives that may be able to give you better results in every category, but they would not be able to compete with Camera 400 in terms of price. Whereas Camera 400 now sits at about $4 per 36 exposure roll, the other film stocks that I mentioned are going to sit about $5, $50, or $6 per roll. When you're only shooting one roll every once in a while, that price difference isn't that big of a deal. But if you're consistent and you're constantly shooting film, that price difference really does start to add up. 
For me, Camera Mirror 400 is a good everyday walk around film. A film for recording stuff that I really don't care about or one I don't have a specific look in mind. Stuff that I don't want to waste expensive film on and that's where the value of Camera Mirror 400 comes in for me. Again, when I first started shooting film, I shot a lot of Camera 400 because it was cheap. It allowed me to experiment with shooting film, with chemicals, the whole genre of analog photography, and that was invaluable because I really didn't want to spend $6 or more on some of the other film socks to really just mess around and see if I liked to shoot film or not. And even now that I've shot film for a few years, I have a feel for the genre and know exactly what I want from a film stock, I still find value in Camera 400 because it's cheap. It allows me to really shoot film whenever I want and I really worry about that cost. And at the end of the day, Camera 400 is still a great film. It's a good middle line. It's not great at anything per se, but it's good at everything. And that is really all I need. If you're looking for a cheap 400 speed black and white film, then I highly suggest you pick up some Camera 400 and try it out for yourself because you never know, it might just blow your world and at this price, what can it hurt? If you're interested in anything that you've seen in this video, check out the links in the description below. Give this video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe for more content, and thank you for watching this video, I'll see you guys in the next one.